Hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, The Many Hats of 911, Providing Public Education No Matter Which Hat You Wear. This training is brought to you by Commercial Electronics. If you'd like to learn more about our recording solution, our third-party quality assurance services, or Live 911, visit comelectronics.com. This webinar is part of our public safety education series, and you can view our upcoming webinars on our training page at comelectronics.com training. Now, I've got a few housekeeping things um, to mention. Common functions um, on the left of the screen, such as um, questions, polls, chats, and uh, microphone are um, on the left and these are ones that we regularly use. There are two features that I do want to point out. Um, the first is the handouts button. And um, it, the handouts that are included in this session, um, you can click on the handouts button and you can view those. Um, they'll also be sent to you um, with the recording of the webinar. Also, uh, you want to see the notes button. Um, you can take notes during the webinar, and those notes will be emailed to you automatically at the conclusion of the session. Now, keep in mind that you will be the only one who will be able to see your notes. My name is Beth English, and I'm the trainer and the QA program manager for Commercial Electronics. I started my career in public safety communications 33 years ago at the ripe old age of nine. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Um, I've got my master's telecommunicator certification from Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, and I'm a T. Cole instructor and a past Texas DENA president. Um, on the personal side, my husband and I spend our leisure time RVing with two dogs, four cats, and a hedgehog, Squeak. So after today's lesson, you will be able to state the purpose of public education, You'll be able to list the differences between age-related topics. You'll be able to create lesson plans based on those differences, and you'll be able to provide audience-appropriate presentations. Now, before we go on, I'd like to do a poll. So our first poll is, do you currently provide public education for your agency? Okay, so we have some yeses, we have some noes. Okay, well, for those of you who already do provide public education, maybe you'll learn something new. And for those of you who don't provide public education, I hope you learn something new. Okay. So why do we do public education? I mean, surely by now everyone knows about 911. We all know the phone number. We all know it's for emergencies. And so why do we even need to do public education? Well, just listen to the calls that come in every day and you'll hear why. Citizens wanting to know uh, the parade route, complaints that the trash wasn't picked up, um, people stuck in traffic behind an accident and they want an officer to come get them and take them to go to the bathroom. So there are still citizens actually who think 911 is a big complex in the middle of the US and all calls are answered there. They have no idea that they have their own 911 center in their community. And you would think by now that everyone knew what they needed to know about 911, but calls today still prove that the public needs more education. And it's up to you to provide that education. So, um, you can do that regardless of which hat you wear or which hat they wear. So you've been wanting to have more responsibility because you want to advance in your career, right? Well, good news. Your agency has decided to give you some more responsibility. You get to do public education now. Yes, that means speaking in front of people and doing presentations. Now, I know some of you were born to speak in public. You're fearless. You're ready to share your knowledge with anyone who will listen. You leap tall buildings in a single bound, and you talk to fence posts. The rest of us think to ourselves, oh, darn, 
I hate speaking in public. That was my first reaction when I was given the opportunity to start doing public education. Now, once you've decided that there's no way out of this, you start wondering where to start. So what are you gonna say to people and who are you gonna talk to? Um, what you say totally depends on the hat you're wearing and who you're talking to. So the first thing you have to do is learn everything you can about your audience. Now, the easiest way to start presenting in public is to start with kids. Now, for the most part, they don't care what you say as long as you keep them entertained. And in order to do that, you need to be able to relate to them. And for many of you, this is as easy as walking. For some of us, that's the actual most difficult part of dealing with kids, even more difficult than public speaking. This was the hardest part for me because I, I just don't relate to kids. Um, for those of you who love children, um, all children, no matter whose, this is the perfect place to start and the perfect fit for you. The rest of us have to brush up on our acting skills. So for instance, I have to act like I'm having a good time and, um, and I'm relating to the kids. So sometimes you will have to contact schools in your area um, and ask about coming out to do a presentation. Most schools are more than happy to have you come out and give the teachers a break, along with providing some extra education for the kids. Uh, some schools may actually call your agency and ask for someone to come out and present to certain grades. You can also contact local daycares who keep the pre-K and kin kindergartners after um, half a day school, and you can do short sessions for them. And, that, and that'll help you get used to going to the school and doing sessions for bigger groups of kids. Now, when presenting to young kids, um, you get started by talking to them about things they like to talk about. You know, you meet them on their level with topics that they're interested in, such as what they like to do on weekends, um, who likes school, um, you know, what kind of games they like to play, different things like that. Then you ask them if they know the phone number to 911 and you go from there. Another way to present to them is to make it active. Let them participate in the presentation. I used to have um, each child turn to their turn to their right, no, the other right, turn to their right and look at the person sitting next to them. And then I would have them turn back to the front and I would pick a couple of kids to come to the front with me and describe the person that was sitting next to them. Um, this way, they were able to understand the importance of paying attention to their surroundings so that if they had to call 911, they would be able to give that information because that's information we're asking for. Using humor will also get their attention. That's the reason that we have characters like um, Smokey the Bear, I'm probably dating myself here, um, Smokey the Bear, Cell Phone Sally, and McGruff. So, Pretend to be having an emergency, uh, but make it fun, like you know, having your cat stuck in a tree or something like that. Um, ask them if they can call 911 for this emergency. Uh, with older kids, obviously, you're gonna have to take it up a notch and um, to keep them entertained and interested in what you have to say. When you're presenting to older kids, it'll be easier because of the hat that you wear. You can tell stories of past calls, you can play recordings, and this will keep the older kids interested. Um, you wanna be careful about using recordings from your own agency because you never know who 
is going to be in the audience that may have um, may have been a part of that call or who may have been a crime victim of that call. Um, so bring recordings from other agencies and agencies are usually happy to share um, calls for training and different things like that. Um, you want to um, play some calls that, um, that were intense, uh, some that ended well and some that didn't to play for them. Um, give them information when you play these calls, give them information about what went wrong, um, what maybe what incorrect information was given to the 911 operator or um, even a call where the caller was so hysterical that um, the operator, the 911 operator couldn't help them um, so that they can see on their own what needs to happen during a call and what doesn't need to happen during a call. Now, remember, the older kids are wearing a different hat than the younger ones, and they're going to need something a little more exciting to keep them engaged. Um, but I have found that um, the same exercise that I do with the younger kids of um, making them describe each other um, has turned out to be a fun activity, even for the older kids. So um, just out of morbid curiosity, let's do another poll. Okay, would you rather talk to a group of small children or a group of high schoolers about 911? I'll give you a couple, few minutes to answer that. Okay, we're running about half and half on this. Some like to, to talk to the smaller kids, some would rather talk to the older kids. And you know, just in case you haven't already figured it out, I would rather talk to the older kids. Okay, very good. Now, so you've you've decided you wanted to move up in your career, and so now you're a supervisor. And this means by default, you get to do more for less, including public education. But you're wearing a different hat now. So you need to decide who you're going to taco to and who and what you're going to taco about. So this is too big for my chair. Um, if you've been given an assignment to provide public education to the community, um, first you're going to, going to want to make a list of the groups that you're going to target for your presentations. Now remember, these people are older, so you will need to make sense, number one, while you're speaking, and um, games that worked with the children um, are probably not going to work with this, these groups that you're going to be talking to. So let's say, you know, one target could be a homeowners association. And as part of your research, you want to put yourself in their shoes and think about what they're most concerned about in their neighborhood. Um, have they had numerous vehicle burglaries lately? Um, do they live in an area where shootings are commonplace in the area around their neighborhood? Um, or how about people drag racing and endangering others? Is that something that they um, frequently experience? So once you've researched their area, create your presentation based on your research. Now, you may be presenting to the local Red Hat Society. Okay. Did you know that each chapter of the Red Hat Society has their own chapter name? Um, they have names like Hatastrophes, uh, Red Hens and Pink Chicks, and my favorite, the Ruby Floozies, just to name a few. Um, and each chapter has their own events for their local area. And just like any other group you might present to, um, they may need a speaker at one of their events. Um, also keep in mind that, you know, although they're a mixed group, uh, many of their members are going to be seniors. 
So you want to present to them as you would any other senior group. Um, you want to keep it basic enough for them to understand, but include enough information to actually inform them about how the system works for them in their area. Um, you know, oddly enough, a lot of seniors are um, are still technically savvy because they've just kept up with things as um, as technology has um, improved and moved forward. They've moved forward with it. So um, so you don't want to dumb it down. Um, that's not what I'm saying. I just want to I'm just saying that you want to make sure that those who aren't technically savvy um, understand what you're talking about. So um, that's one group. But, you know, let's not forget about the genteel ladies societies that are out there, such as um, Junior League. Um, you know, there are all kinds of different ladies groups in different communities that you can present to. Now, um, you know, there are some high society groups that we probably would not be fortunate enough to um, to present to. But. There are a lot of charity related clubs out there um, and they'll they want speakers at their monthly meetings um, because they're looking for um, different things to donate money to. They're looking for different needs in the community. Um, and so um, you would definitely want to check out those groups and um, you need to know what their concerns, what their charities are um, in advance. Um, so that you can speak to those as you're talking to them. And depending on the area where you are, um, you might need to present to the local Bubba's and Bubbalinas. Okay, I can speak to this because, um, well, I'm there. So, um, you know, perhaps you're in a farming area where you might need to speak to local groups such as uh, the Farm Bureau, a Cattlemen's Association, or even the local farmers market uh, participants. Um, there are situations they find themselves in that they're at a loss as to what to do. Um, you have farming accidents, thefts, trespassers, you know, things like that. And they need to know why they should call 911 rather than handling some of those situations themselves. Um, a lot of them don't understand what 911 can do for them because they have such a small community. Uh, for instance, my uncle died in a farm accident. He was driving a tractor and he, he came up to a narrow bridge and he was going to cross it, but he tried to cross it on the tractor like he was driving a car. So he drives up to the bridge and turns um, to cross it instead of going, trying to hit it going straight across. And um, so when, when he tried to turn onto the bridge, well, the back tires uh, you know, didn't make it on. And so the tractor started to fall. And when he realized that the tractor was gonna fall off the bridge, he jumped out of the tractor um, to avoid being in it when it fell. Um, unfortunately, um, where he jumped is exactly where the tractor fell and the tractor fell on him. Now, rather than calling 911 immediately, um, the, the farm hands tried to um, pick the tractor up off of him and um, before anybody ever called, 911. So I don't know if the um, if the delay um, had anything to do with his death. Um, of course, we'll never know. But, um, you know, it possibly could have. But people need to understand that regardless of how small their community is, they shouldn't delay calling 911. They should call 911 immediately. Now you'll also have um, chambers of commerce um, that generally will have monthly meetings, whether it's a, a breakfast get together at a restaurant or a lunch or um, something like that. And they frequently look for guest speakers for their meetings. And so this is another group that can be contacted 
to do presentations. Also, um, members of the Chamber of Commerce have businesses and, um, and could use information about the multi-line telephone systems, um, but maybe the locations that display when they call from those phones. And then of course, um, the laws regarding that type of phone system like Carrie's law. So these are good places to start when you're tasked with providing pub ed in your community. Um, but where else can you go to do presentations? Okay. Um, there's festivals and fun events. Uh, again, depending on where you are, um, you know, de will determine probably how many fairs and festivals you have where you can present public education. And a lot of them um, will be centered around cultural events. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, for instance, tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. And there are going to be festivals in numerous neighborhoods. Um, many areas will have um, events in large buildings, such as at the fairgrounds or maybe at the convention center or some other large venue that will accommodate everyone. Um, and what they'll do is they'll have different booths set up with different vendors and um, who provide food, um, different products for sale, handmade items, things like that, um, swag and other information. So if you plan in advance, you can find out when and where the festivals are going to be and arrange to have a booth or a table set up and hand out information about 911. Now, you know, every year there's going to be a Cinco de Mayo festival somewhere. So um, you could go ahead and start checking on that um, and find out where it's going to be held for the next year. Now, I mentioned National Night Out earlier, and this is another great event for doing public education. Doing events like these can be easier on those of you who don't feel comfortable um, speaking in public um, because National Night Out is, is more one-on-one -on -one education. Um, you can go to different neighborhoods, um, you get free food and drinks, um, and while you're socializing with your citizens, you can tell them what you do as a 911 operator or supervisor. Um, you might even carry bags around that, um, that you have uh, coloring sheets, puzzles, things like that that you've printed out, or um, any swag that you've purchased. So um, some good items for swag would be things like pens, um, screwdrivers or tool sets for adults, uh, maybe car coasters. And then um, for kids, temporary tattoos are very popular, um, frisbees and yo-yos for the kids. In fact, um, let me show you this. Um, this is really inexpensive. I don't want to say cheap, but yeah, they are cheap. Um, but I've got, um, when I handed these out, I kind of hoarded some. Um, but these are flyers. Let's see if you can see that. These are flyers that, you know, were handed out. I handed them out years ago. And they're great because you throw them like a Frisbee and, and To hand out. So um, if you don't have, hold on, I went away. Okay, you should be able to see my screen again now. Um, so if you don't have the budget, to purchase items. Um, you can go to the resource list that's um, in the handout that I've included, and you can print off puzzles, coloring sheets, um, and medical information sheets to hand out. And the medical information sheets are really good for the senior citizens. They, uh, they like those because 
It helps when, you know, they call for EMS. So those are really good to hand out. And then rather than coming out of the 911 budget, these printed materials um, that you've printed um, can come out of your um, office supply budget because all you're doing is using um, copy paper. Now, let's not forget about other um, holiday celebrations and holiday events such as the one coming up the 4th of July. Um, so you, you'll have a 4th of July parade and other celebrations. Now, fortunately for us, citizens can now tell the difference between gunshots and fireworks. So we don't have to worry about whether these are fireworks going off. Um, and so that takes a, a big load off of us having to worry about that, right? Um, however, there is certainly more information that we can provide to them about the various dangers at holiday celebrations, including, oops, um, including the dangers associated with fireworks. Um, you know, we have, uh, we've taken calls of lost fingers, um, you know, limbs being blown off, different things, fire, uh, fireworks backfiring and causing injuries. So we still have, even though all the citizens know the difference between gunshots and fireworks, we do still have other calls that we're going to have to respond to. So, um, and then you have those other holidays like um, the, the heavy shopping seasons. Um, and those give us uh, ample opportunity for more public education. Now, you know that there are numerous PSAs telling people to lock their cars, uh, don't leave valuables inside, walk in groups to their vehicles after shopping, things like that. Um, there are also more than enough PSAs surrounding Thanksgiving, uh, providing information about the safe way to fry turkeys, uh, the dangers of leaving the ovens on, etc. But every year we get the same calls. Um, every year the callers don't know what to say. They don't know where they are. Um, or they don't know what we're going to be able to do about it, or um, they, uh, they're they so hysterical because they were frying the turkey in the kitchen and the whole house is on fire now. So just like those PSAs that are broadcast every year, <clears throat> every year we need to repeat what we tell them about 911. Now, climbing up the ladder, um, it's the manager's or the director's turn to provide public education. And so you who <clears throat> you wonder who are they going to present to? I mean, you've already hit the schools, the daycares, the old people, the young people, the parades, the festivals, and the holiday goers. So who's left? Well, you know, the head honcho is gonna have to inform other head honchos about 911. So think about what happens when a call goes south. There are several groups that are going to want to hear what happened. Um, it may be the city council, it may be the county commissioners and E911 board, um, or the council of governments, you know, any of those governing boards. And when there's a bad call, it has to be explained to everyone. Um, it may be the dispatcher's fault, or it may be an equipment failure. Um, either way, all the upper management is going to need an explanation. Not to mention, if the incident made its way to the media, then there are going to be more explanations needed. And many times, the powers that be don't really know how their city or their county's 911 system works. <coughs> and why this could have been an equipment issue rather than the fault of the dispatcher. So for instance, they don't understand that we still get 911 calls misrouted to the wrong agency or the wrong city, and at times even misrouted to the wrong state. So there's a bit of public education that goes along with solving issues in the comm center. And then also think about the times that your agency has had a great call when um, you might have had a save or assisted law enforcement in capturing a suspect. Um, 
a lot of times the manager or director will contact the media so that they can have a feel good story published and recognize someone for the exceptional job they did. Um, and I know a lot of you are thinking, well, that didn't happen at my agency. Well, it may not be your, um, your manager or your director um, or your chief or lieutenant or captain or whoever's over you that, that does that. But, um, but you, can, you can do that yourself. You can call the media and let them know, here's a feel good story. Um, so, and also what if your center got some great new product to help reduce response times like live 911. Uh, so I had to throw that in there. Look that up if you aren't familiar with it. Um, and so the media will want to write about that as well. So, um, and they'd also, want, they'll also want to do a live interview. Um, so those are things that your, uh, manager, uh, director might want to, might need to do for public education. And then there may be important visitors, um, to the center that the manager director has to, um, inform about, you know, other systems being used, how those systems affect the work of the responders um, on the street, any difficulties there might be with the equipment, and then provide specifics of how the various systems connect to each other to process the 911 calls from beginning to end. So there will be things that the manager or director needs to handle um, just because what they're discussing is, you know, frankly above some of our heads. So let's do one last poll. Um, does your agency provide a budget for pub ed materials and swag? Okay, some do, some don't. Okay, a lot don't. All right. So I've mentioned handouts and swag. Move forward. Okay, I've mentioned handouts and swag several times now. And if your agency has a public education budget, you can purchase items for very low cost through some of the resources that I've included in the handouts in, um, in the lesson. But what if you don't have a budget? For pub ed. Um, if you don't have a budget, consider asking um, charity groups to donate to your agency for public education items. Some charitable organizations will let you do a presentation to their group for a donation. And Walmart um, also has local community grants that they award to organizations that serve the local community. Um, the Walmart local community um, and will directly benefit the service area of that Walmart. So years ago, I wanted to purchase um, a Reddy Fox, um, who was the original 911 pub ed character. Um, and that he was at a conference um, and a company had him there on a tricycle. It was remote controlled and the operator could speak into the mic and it would come out of the character's mouth, which moved. Um, so it looked like he was the one talking. Now he was quite expensive, um, but I was able to raise enough money between the charitable organizations in town and the Walmart grants that I was able to qualify for. Um, and once I raised most of the money, uh, the city finally gave me the rest of the money. So, um, so what I did is I took him to, um, to cultural events, to, took him out to national night out parades, and I took him to schools. And the kids loved him, and even the adults loved him. Um, everybody would look inside his mouth trying to figure out, you know, who was in there talking. And he was, he was pretty small. I don't know who they thought would be fitting inside of there, but... Um, and then what I did is I hid the mic in a um, spill-proof cup and, um, and then I pretended I was drinking. So nobody ever knew that it was me talking. And like I said, he was remote control. So I just had my hand down at my side 
um, driving him to different places. And I'd stop and I'd talk to kids and I'd ask him questions. And then I'd talk to adults and I'd ask them questions. And like I said, we went in, uh, we went to parades. Um, we did all kinds of stuff and, and everybody loved him. Um, he really was the best uh, tool that I had for public education. Now, he's not available anymore, but you could put your grants towards purchasing um, a cell phone Sally costume. And in addition to the grants that Walmart has, um, Target also has um, some grant programs. Um, they have a community vitality grant program um, and then they also have um, a, uh, it's called Reach Community Grants, um, and they have uh, Target gift card donations. So these are things that you can go to Target's website and research and see um, what, you can, uh, what you can get in the way of donations from Target. So the links to both of those programs is in today's um, handouts, and those should be available to you now. So there are numerous uh, charitable organizations out there in the communities. You just have to find the ones that are in your area um, to work with. Now, another resource to you is other pub ed groups. Uh, years ago, Texas started the 911 Public Educators of Texas, um, or PETS. And it was a group of telecommunicators, supervisors, and 911 coordinators who got together to discuss ways to get the public more educated about when to use 911. Now, that group grew over the years, and they decided to take it national. And that's when NPEF, or the National Pub Public Educators Forum, uh, was formed. So there have also been numerous other state groups formed that provide the same collaboration with others in their state. And most of those groups have um, their resources online, so anyone who needs them can use them. And so links to um, many of these resources have been included in your handouts. Now, there are so many things to do when you're going to present a public education session, but it all boils down to the same things. You need to do your research. Oops. Okay. Do your research. Um, know your audience. Look up the group that you're going to be presenting to and make sure that you know what issues they're concerned about um, so that you can incorporate those into your um, public education program. Um, Know what their group does so that you can speak intelligently to them and, um, and give them the 911 information that they need to know the most. And if you need to, call somebody with the group before you go do your presentation and ask them questions about what their group does, um, you know, what they're um, specifically um, geared towards so that you can be more informed when you go do your presentation. Um, you'll find that anybody, everybody is happy to answer your questions. And then you want to be prepared. Have your materials together and have them organized. Know what you're going to hand out and when. And if you're playing 911 calls, um, make sure that they work on whatever computer or sound system that you're going to be playing them on. Uh, if you're going to do scenarios, have your papers ready for that. Don't leave anything to chance, even if you've done this presentation 15 times before. Um, now, one of the uh, things that I've done in the past is um, I've, take, I've gotten a recording or recordings of some 911 calls, and, um, and I made paper copies of our um, call sheets. And I gave everybody um, a copy of the call sheet, a blank call sheet, and I played the call and I told them, this is the information that you need to get. And then I played the call for them. And so they were supposed to fill in the blanks as the call went through. Um, some of them were able to get, you know, one or two pieces of information. Some of them threw their pen down after the, you know, after about 10 seconds of the call and said, I can't get this. 
um, but it actually um, gave them a better understanding of actually what goes on in a 911 center and what we're working on and what we're working with. So, um, so those kinds of um, exercises are good. And again, you know, having somebody look at their neighbor and, and then try to describe them to you um, is, um, is still a really good exercise for um, adult groups. Um, and it's really funny when you get husband and wife sitting next to each other and a husband can't describe the wife at all. So, um, so you know, have those exercises ready and, and be ready for those. Um, so no matter what hat you wear, whether you're a telecommunicator and you're saying, oh, darn, um, or you're a supervisor and you're going to go taco to somebody or you're the big boss, the big boss. There are always groups you can provide 911 public education to. Um, remember, just because 911 has been around since 1968, there are still hundreds of people who aren't familiar with it. They've never had to call 911, so they don't know what happens when they do. Now, before we get to questions, I want to remind you to tune in next month, same bat time, same bat channel, Wednesday, June 1st at noon central time for our next webinar. I will be doing the six month leadership series again, beginning with the top six leadership skills you need. Um, in part one of this leadership series, we're gonna learn what leadership is, why we need leadership skills, which ones we already have, and which skills we need the most. So if anybody has questions, go ahead and send those in. Um, I will leave this up for a few minutes to answer anybody, give you time to type those in. In the meantime, this training was brought to you by Commercial Electronics, um, where we provide live 911. Again, if you haven't heard of that, look it up. Um, higher ground capture 911 recording system and third party quality assurance. So I want to thank you for joining us today. And again, if you have questions, just send those in and we'll answer those as uh, soon as you send them in. Otherwise, have a great day.